In this example, we want to use the squeeze theorem to find the limit of x squared times cosine of 5 pi x as x approaches 0. Okay. All right, so to, all right, to, to use the squeeze theorem here, remember that we need to bound our function. Okay. In this case, our function is, right, we have our function is x squared times cosine of 5 pi x. All right. So what we can do is start out with, uh, let's just first look at this function here, cosine of 5 pi x. Okay. We know that cosine, for whichever argument it is, okay, we know that cosine is bounded between negative 1 and 1. Okay. All right, so we have that minus 1 is less than cosine of 5 pi x less than or equal to 1. Okay. So what we can do here, okay, is we, we want, so we want to bound x squared times cosine of 5 pi x. Okay, so we can multiply, we can multiply through by x squared here. Okay, so we're going to get minus x squared less than or equal to x squared cosine of 5 pi x less than or equal to x squared. Okay. So there's our, right, so there's our bound. Okay, so we have a, uh, we have a lower bound here and an upper bound here. So we've bounded our, our given function, okay. And over here you can see in the graph, okay, the, the graph in orange is our function of f, okay. So it's, okay, x squared times cosine 5, times, oh, I'm sorry, x squared times cosine of 5 pi x. And can see here there's this is your uh, our parabola x squared and this is the minus x squared function okay so now we can go ahead and apply apply the squeeze theorem okay so we're going to take the limit of minus x squared as x approaches zero this is going to give us zero and we take the limit of x squared as x approaches 0. This is going to give us 0. So therefore, okay, right, for this function, okay, the limit, so the limit of x squared times cosine 5 pi x as x approaches 0, is also going to be zero. Okay, so this is how we apply the squeeze theorem. Okay, so we have to we work with a we work with uh, a set of inequalities here. We know that cosine, for whichever argument it is, it's going to be bounded between negative one and one, and then we can multiply through by x squared, and that gives us our lower bound and upper bound. We take the limit of our lower bound as x approaches zero. Take the limit of the upper bound as x approaches 0. They turn out to give us the same limit. Therefore, the limit of our function is, as x approaches 0 is 0. Okay, and that's what you see here in this graph. Okay.